you know, once you learn one romance language, you can learn all the other ones. And it's like, why would I do that? Why? Hi, my name's Elise Vega. I've studied over 10 languages, but today we're gonna talk about the five that I've straight up just given up on. I talk a lot about my successes in language learning, but you gotta talk about the failures too, okay? Well, I don't know if I would call it failure necessarily because it's just happened, you know, a handful of times where I've started to pursue a language and then I realized like, you know, this isn't for me, this is too hard, maybe this isn't hard enough, this isn't fun, I'm not feeling it. So whatever the reasons may be, today we're gonna spill all the tea on all the languages that just didn't make the cut for me personally. And I, I say that because I don't want nobody attacking me, okay? If you're a native speaker of these languages or you study these languages, that's dandy, okay? It's just languages that I never really made a connection with or I decided weren't worth it for me in the long run. So let's get into it. Psych, first I wanna talk about the sponsor of this video, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes available in a variety of languages. So if you've ever wanted to learn to beatbox, if you've ever wanted to learn the German alphabet, if you've ever wanted to learn to code, this is the platform for you, my friend. The majority of content on Skillshare is in English, but there's also the opportunity to learn skills from other languages. So you could learn like yoga from Spanish or calligraphy in Portuguese, for example. I already showed you guys in another video, but my most recent class that I finished was a journaling class in Spanish. And it was so cool to, you know, learn how to express my most intimate thoughts and feelings in another language. And that's the kind of cool stuff that you get to do with Skillshare. I'm also currently in the works of developing my own Skillshare courses. I've been wanting to do that for such a long time, but I'm currently working on one for learning Mexican Spanish and and a course for journaling in a foreign language. So I'm very excited about that. I just love Skillshare so much as a learner and as a creator. And Skillshare was generous enough to offer you guys three free months of access to the platform to watch my future courses, of course. So if you wanna hop on that, link will be in the description. Back to the video. The first language that I ever gave up on was Russian. Russian is the first language I ever gave up on, okay? Once upon a time, when I was like eight or nine years old in school, they informed us that we were going to be taking Russian classes. And then it was mandatory for every fourth grader. It was not a private school. It was a very public school of all places in Memphis, Tennessee, the rural South, the most conservative part of the country. And we were forced to take Russian. Like what? Does that not seem like, I don't know. I feel like that would never happen in today's times in the United States, but anyways. The only memories I have now from my Russian classes are just like a handful of greetings, infantile words. Здравствуйте, привет, меня зовут Elise, как дела? Кошка, мышка, карандаш, I don't know. It's all a blur, okay, it's all a blur. I also, I remember this song that we learned, it was called Minka, it's like a some Russian folk song, but we didn't even learn it in Russian, we just learned it in English. Send the Cossack to the maiden, love my heart is heavy laden, do you recall so I'm a Afraid enchantress, we must part. Why do I remember these lyrics? I beseech you, Ferris Nico, wait for me. I'd hate to think another man might come and take her with your faithful. How did I remember that? But alas, all my Russian is gone now. I think that, you know, a public school education combined with the motivation and study habits of a literal eight year old. Um, didn't make the best case for Russian. So for that Russian, I'm sorry. But something cool that came out of all of this is that my mom is now fluent in Russian because when we started taking classes at school, she also was like, I wanna do that. So she started taking her own Russian classes at the local community college, but she actually stuck with it. So for some reason, today, 2022, my mom's fluent in Russian. How does that occur, you know? Hello? Hey, sweetie. Can you say something in Russian? Yeah, how are you? Okay, it's like... <laughs> Go mom! Okay, but for me, Russian is canceled. Canceled. Now, time travel to 2019. Let's talk about Korean, okay? Because Korean is the first language that I actually remember trying and like giving up consciously. Like that was a decision. Because with Russian, it just faded away. But Korean, it was me, 19 years old, actively deciding I don't want this. And there are kind of two trains of thought about why I quit Korean. The first being, okay, and don't attack me. Let me explain. The other people that learn Korean. <laughs> the second being the actual features of the language. Starting off with the people that learn Korean, okay? I'm just gonna say it. You might as well not try to learn Korean if you don't like K-pop. I'm just gonna say it. There are so many things that I find strange about K-pop fan bases that I just, I'm not gonna get into because I don't wanna get doxxed, but that's all I'm gonna say, okay? And lastly, talking about other people that learn Korean, I feel like this also bleeds into other Eastern Asian languages like Japanese and Chinese as well, is the emphasis on exam prep and the topic. Oh my god. So for Japanese, the equivalent is the JLPT. For Chinese, it's the HSK. But these exams, dude, it seems like everybody's studying for them. It seems like nobody's studying for fun. Like, everybody's constantly talking about how many words they know, what level they think they're gonna test into, how they're studying for exams. And that kind of just, you know, took the fun out of it for me. I couldn't relate to anybody and I just felt like, 
We're all in this like topic rat race, you know? But, you know, talking about European languages, yes, I know that we talk about CEFR levels quite a bit, but I think it's not as constant, it's not as pervasive like in the everyday existence of studying as it is with like the topic or the JLPT because it's a lot more, it stretches over a lot more languages. So I feel like it's, it's weaker because of that. So we just don't put as much emphasis on the levels. Does that make sense? So now talking about what features of the Korean language actually made me want to quit Korean, it's literally just one thing. It's it's the formality register, like the politeness levels. There are seven politeness levels in Korean, ranging from like intimate to polite to familiar. I just could not cope with that, okay? Like for me personally, I am used to politeness registers. Like in Spanish, you have formal and informal, and it's the same way in French and German and Turkish, it's just formal, informal. That's only two registers, not seven, like seven? For what? I just didn't always want to be in my head like calculating which register to use. I was also scared of like potentially offending somebody for not using the right one. And I'm not sure, like that could be a misconception. I'm not sure how much people actually care about it in everyday Korean, but this combined with all the other reasons I already had, I was just like, okay, cut it. Cancel. Moving on to Dutch. Dude, I cannot even remember why I wanted to learn Dutch. It was fall 2019. I was starting my sophomore year of college. The dumbest thing is that I was studying it simultaneously with German. German of all languages. Me as a native English speaker studying Dutch and German simultaneously. That is like a trinity of bullshit. For my brain, like that's not good, bro. That's not good. German and Dutch have 80% lexical similarity. So that means that every four out of five words between the languages are either the same word or they have a cognate from the same root. So like studying those simultaneously is insane for me personally. I lasted about like a month like that before I realized that it wasn't going to work studying it simultaneously with German. I guess I thought it would be easy because of that, but you know, now I know that that actually just makes it pretty much harder to learn in both. And further, I gave up on Dutch because like I said earlier, I kind of just started learning Dutch on a whim. Like I didn't have any cultural interest. I had no Dutch friends. I had nothing like pulling me to the language. And that's why it's really important to evaluate before you start studying a language. Like how far do I see this going? Is this sustainable for me? Is there a good opportunity? opportunity for growth, what obstacles could get in the way. And you might need to actually start studying the language to determine that, but you know, it's just, just something to keep in mind, okay? Okay. Dutch, cancel. Okay. Last on our chopping block is Catalan and Italian. I thought I should just talk about these together because one, they're from the same family, and two, I've stopped learning both of them for the same exact reason. And that was because they're just too similar to languages that I already know, okay? I am maxed out with romance languages. Spanish, French, Portuguese, I'm good, okay? And you know, some people say like, you know, once you learn one romance language, you can learn all the other ones. And it's like, why would I do that? Why? It's such a waste of- For me, okay. I'm learning languages to connect with as many people as I can. And even if you learn all of the romance languages in the world, you still only have access to one seventh of the world's population. Fun fact. Anyways, by trying out so many different romance languages, I've just realized that I no longer have the patience nor the interest in learning five cognates of the same word. Tradition, tradition, tradition. Like, I'm done. <laughs> okay, that is so boring for me. So Italian, Catalan, sorry, canceled. You know, these days I recognize that I love languages that are challenging and new for me. Like, that's why I had so much fun when I started learning German because it was just so wildly different from anything I'd learned before. And that's why I'm having so much fun with Turkish. Like, it's my first agglutinative language. So, I don't know, I suggest that you challenge yourself too. It really, it does build character and it builds you up as a language learner. So when we look back at all the reasons that I gave up on these languages, what can we learn? You, first of all, you shouldn't learn a language for the aesthetic, that's a no-no. Um, if you're gonna learn a language related to one that you already know, don't study them at the same time. Also, lastly, if you're gonna learn Russian, don't be an inept eight-year-old. Be a smart eight-year-old. And that's all I gotta say about that, okay? Take this as you will. If you're learning any of these languages, if you speak any of these languages, it's not a diss, okay? Good for you, I'm happy for you. But in my book, they were flops, and that's fine. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. And if you wanna get really crazy, hit the little bell notification to get a notification every single time that I post. See you next time. Hasta la próxima. Até mais. A bientôt. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Gurushurus. Ciao. Bye.